success. Could have been done with one person, but two, Carol helped, huge. And see here, the part next step here was to hang the tail cone. We managed to put the uh, mount to the frame, the cabin, <clears throat> and then the use of, <laughs> luckily we had a garage door hoist here, a garage door rail, and an A-frame at the other end to actually hold this level while we get it mounted to the tail cone. The bolts all lined up very nicely, and uh, just a matter of tightening them up now to secure them. But uh, this is uh, huge. So pretty cool. All right, well welcome back. We got a little bit done in the last week. The vertical fin is now complete. That was a process much like the horizontal stabilizers which we showed you last week. Uh, cherry match rivets here on the ribs, hard rivets with a squeezer alternating on the trailing edge. So we got a nice straight trailing edge here. The gearbox is on for the tail rotor. We've actually had the tail rotor on but we got that back off, we just think it's going to be safer because we've got some manipulation to do here. The intermediate gearbox is on. I really love this gantry crane. I've never had one before and I found so many uses for it in building this helicopter. I don't know if you can see it there. This is one we got from Summit Racing and uh, it just really works nice. I know we're going to use it at the shop to hang engines. Much better, I think, and easier than using an engine uh, hoist, which... Uh, is hydraulic. This one you can actually make small incremental movements in each direction with the chain hoist up there. So what we're going to use it for today is to lift this main rotor transmission. This thing is really heavy. I could barely move it out of the box and I know Carol and I can't begin to lift it up there, especially with this uh, you know, main uh, tail boom in the way. So we're going to try to lift this up, move it over to the center, and then set it. I've got the bolts pre-arranged here all the holes. So here goes. Who was it who said, give me a, a lever I can move the earth? Is that Archimedes or somebody? I know it wasn't Big Syracuse. But it sure feels this way right now. But this is just a piece of dirt. So there's five holes that the bolts have to go into, two on each side and one in the center front. Making sure we're not hung up on anything. Alright, All right, we got it on. Not without some hammers and some wiggling and making sure it went in straight so the bolts all went in very nicely. And uh, it actually went in about the same as hanging an engine, uh, like homing on engine mount, just a bunch of wiggling around. And uh, we got it done and no cuss words this time. Hi everyone, time for a hummingbird update. I know we haven't been doing a real good job here, but uh, we just get going too fast. So let me show you some things on where we're at since last time. The transmission, this is the main rotor transmission. That was a lot of work. It's pretty heavy. I think we showed you that in a video. So that's done. 
And now connected to that is the tail rotor drive shaft. So you can see that runs the entire length there. It's pretty long. And one of the things, you know, it's supported at six different locations with these bearings that were actually kind of a pain in the neck to get on the uh, uh, shaft. Lots of uh, Vaseline there and a fight and some words. Eventually, we managed to get those all on. And now the important thing is to get this shaft lined up in a straight line. So what I've done is I've run a string from one end of the shaft to the other. And hopefully you can look down this thing here if it focuses and see we got a nice straight line on that shaft. And so that's kind of a trick I learned on other home builds and you can use too when you're lining up things with multiple fittings like ailerons and flaps. I'll run a string between each of the fittings and that way when I drill them to the spar, whatever the case is, it's a nice straight line and there's no uh, undue pressure. Uh, you know, on the control surface. In this case, if you've ever used a long, like 12 inch drill and drilled off at an angle, that drill will get hot where you've got it bent and it can eventually fail. So this is why you wanna be careful and make certain this drive shaft is lined up. There's actually not a spec for it in the construction manual or in any of the maintenance manuals from Sikorsky, but uh, it's one of those things, let's just make it as straight as possible and then, uh, we should be okay. One of the annoying things down here, it looks like is we got to drill holes right here for this bearing support. And uh, for the life of me, I don't know how to get those nuts on there. So I think we're going to end up cutting an inspection hole right down here on the bottom, much like I did over here uh, for the horizontal stabilizers. So it looks like time for another inspection panel. And let's see, we'll give you another update here in the front. We got some more things done. Uh, a bunch of the interior is now riveted. Once the, we've got the top skin here riveted and I have begun to run some wiring that's gonna be hidden behind panels. So we're gonna have rear cabin lights here. I'll have cockpit dimmers, uh, lights up here. That will be uh, for dimmers for the uh, cabin lights and the panel lights as well. And then also managed to get some more of the uh, side stuff riveted on. All the skins are off now. Took off the front nose uh, chin windows and uh, the nose chin. And uh, eventually here soon getting ready to prime and paint the interior. So uh, anyway, making progress. Take care. So every project always has that one nut or bolt you can't get to. And if you don't have a drawer full of modified wrenches, you haven't built enough or fixed enough things yet. So the challenge today was, and I may have mentioned it in the last video, was how in the heck do we get to these nuts on the backside of that bearing support for the rotor drive shaft? There's actually no access inside this tail cone to get to it. So. In the spirit of modifying wrenches, I found a 716s so I wasn't using, and I bent it at an angle, narrowed it down on the grinder there so it would fit inside this hole. These, these are gonna be where pulleys go for the control cables. And then this slides forward very nicely, and I was able to put the nut right on that bolt. And the way I did that, if you look at this wrench, was I'm gonna try and zoom it in here so you can see it. Let's see if this will work. Yeah, right? I just tape the nut and the washer into this wrench so it doesn't fall out. With it bent at an angle, you can see it's perfect there to get it in. And they actually worked on the first try for each bolt. So now I got another modified wrench. Who knows if I'll ever use it again, but it worked and it sure beat making an uh, access panel.